Good day, fellow investors. Financial retirement is probably the goal of most of those who invest in the stock market. And this is a subject that I really want to emphasize of this channel by starting a series focused on how to get financial independent faster or retire faster safer with more certainty. And that's something you can do by investing in the stock market. You just have to do not what everybody else is doing and blindly invest in index funds. So in this series, video series, we are going to discuss the following topics. In this case, stock market and retiring, great tool, but use it smartly, how to use it. Then we're going to discuss in other videos, the economy, inflation, and your, inf your financial independence, real estate, the fixed versus a dynamic mindset, diversification, etc. In this video, I want to focus on how stocks can make you financially independent, but mind the valuations, value, business strengths, and risks. The value investing truth by businesses with value, I'll explain the price earnings ratio and price to book value and how can you use them to your advantage for the long term. What is value investing, how it helps to certainly get where you want to get, which is the key when it comes to retirement and financial independence, you cannot risk that. Therefore, value investing, current value and strong earnings example of such an investment plus four stocks to watch, and then how to find more stocks on top of the five stocks that I'll give you at the end of the video. So let me show you how you can reach financial independence, how historically it has worked in the past for a lot of people, but you have to see where we are now to see where there it will work for you in the future. And then it all boils down to bottom up investing, finding 20 good businesses that you follow, invest in those that have the best business yield, and then you are set. So let me explain it all by first discussing the main mantra of the investment environment and that is investing in index funds and why that might not be the best vehicle for your retirement. If you look at the S&P 500 index from May 1982, what's that, 36 years, oh my God, I'm getting old, you see that it was a beautiful vehicle for retirement. Those that invested 100,000 in 1982 have now a dividend yield of 48,000 and their capital, their nest egg is 2.6 million. I would call that a wonderful retirement scenario and we excluded reinvested dividends. So it could be much, much more. The problem is that back then really few dared to invest in stocks. Nobody liked stocks. Uh, everybody was running away from stocks because in the past stocks did really, really bad. Even Ray Dalio, the great Ray Dalio didn't invest in stocks 1982. Actually, stocks looked that bad that Dalio was betting against stocks and practically almost lost it all. It was a great lesson for him. He survived later and now he is the Dalio we know. Fast forward 35 years and practically everybody is saying invest in index funds. If you buy an SAP 500 index funds for the long term, you will do really, really well. But what does that well mean? Is it 4% per year? Is it 8% per year? Will it get you where you want to get? Let's see. I'm arguing that 100,000 invested in 1982 is now what? 2.6 million with 50,000 of dividends. But I'm arguing that if you invest 100,000 in the S&P 500 now, it won't be 2.6 million or in the same value if there is not hyperinflation in 30 years. And the dividend yield might not be 50% on that, which means that we have to find other vehicles for retirement or just a little bit smarter vehicles or we have to be careful not to invest with those vehicles that are too risky, like the S&P 500 now. How to do that? Well, we have to focus on value investing and value investing focuses on investing in businesses. And there is one simple investing truth, the value investing truth that Warren Buffett used in 1982, that Seth Klarman used when he founded his Baupost Group in 1982 to simply crazily buy stocks when others like Dalio were selling. And that simple truth to quote Seth Klarman from his book, Margin of Safety goes like this. In the long run, however, stock prices are also tethered, albeit more loosely than bonds, 
to the performance of underlying businesses. So the returns you will get from investing are related to the performance of underlying businesses. If the prevailing stock price is not warranted by underlying value, it will eventually fall. And this is a big risk, something you cannot tolerate when it comes to retirement. Those who bought in at a price that itself reflect, reflected overly optimistic assumptions will incur losses. So when it comes to investing, you have to find those investments that have a good earnings yield, a good business yield, and that at the same time offer value because that is the most likely vehicle to lead you from the current moment to your goal into the future. And here value investing comes in greatly because it limits the risk, low risk equals high reward, not what all other academics are saying. Or as Buffett would summarize it, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And there are two simple tools that are not complete investing tools, but can give you an indication and can really help you when it comes to retirement, financial independence, without really fully digging into the investing worlds, etc. And those are two simple concepts, the price earnings ratio that, that looks at the price, so what you pay versus the value, what you get. And especially if you use 10 year averages, which is the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio, then you can see, okay, what kind of company am I investing? What are the cycles in the business? When to buy it low? And then you can, okay, find also value if you look at the price to book value. And then you can, let's say, have a safer, more certain investment vehicle for your retirement. Let me show you the risk of the current market and then we'll go to the five stocks that you can watch and add it to your list of 2030 stocks that might be much better than an S&P 500 index. So just look at the S&P 500. It has a price earnings ratio of 22. 100 divided by 22 gives me an earnings yield, a business yield of 4.5%. 2% growth on those earnings per year means that over the long term, the business yield and stock market returns are correlated to the business yield will be around four, five, six percent over the very, very long term. So that's it. Can we do better is the question. And what is the risk of this current 4.5% yield. The first risk is that the current 4.5% yield is really low historically. If things return to the mean, then the required returns from stock goes for four, from 4.5 to 6, 8%, the S&P 500 drops 50% if the required returns on stocks doubles. And that's a big risk for those who want to retire because that's something you don't like when the assets you have dropped 50 percent and that has happened in the past especially when stocks were let's say valued at a high valuation 1929 it took 30 years for stocks to recover 26 years from 1965 15 years from 2000 so this is something that investors those who focus on financial independence should really be careful about because this is not something you wish when you want to retire. And then people say, okay, but there are dividends. Yes, it, the dividends were 3.3% in 1929, 3% in 1966. In the 2000s, those were 1.5% and now the dividend yield is just 1.8%. So if stocks go nowhere for 26 years, you cannot tell me that you would be happy with a dividend yield of 1.8%. So for me personally, investing in such index funds is a big, big risk. And I would like to avoid that risk if I want to retire 10, 15, 20 years down the road, because it might be that stocks, stocks would be down 40%. And yes, everybody's saying stocks will always go up. But what is that worth to people, for example, in the Netherlands, where the Amsterdam Exchange Index <laughs> was at almost 700 points in the 2000s and now is at 568 points. So almost what, 19 years, the stock market hasn't recovered, but okay, it's up from the lows of 2002 and 2009. 
in Croatia stocks are still 75% below their 2007 peak. So it's not really that stocks always go up. It depends when you buy them and what's the price you pay. And this leads us to thinking about price earnings ratios and price to book values. And you will see what will be the likely outcome if you focus on those metrics. I have found this amazing chart from Star, Capi Star Capital that has done great research on various indices in the world historically. And we see that when the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio is around 30. So taking 10 year average earnings to adjust for the earnings cycles, economy, boom, bust, taxes, etc. Then you see that the average long term return is for, for a little bit lower than 5% in the long term. So if you want higher returns, you have to squeeze that CAPE ratio to lower margins. So if the CAPE ratio is 10, you can expect much, much higher returns. But before discussing that and giving you examples, let me discuss also the value. As Seth Klarman said, we have to focus on the value so that we have a margin of safety when it comes to investing that protects us from the downside that where the downside is really open with the S&P 500. So if I look at the S&P 500, the price to book value. So if you buy the S&P 500, you pay 3.4 times more than what it costs to build the underlying assets of the S&P 500. Now you might wonder why would people pay more? Well, it is about future earnings. It's about the return on the assets, on the other underlying assets that are historically high. So people are willing to pay much more about book value. but. If you can have growth companies, good return on assets, and you can have it both with a low CAPE ratio, with a low price earnings ratio, with stable businesses, why not focus on both and find 20 businesses that give you both a margin of safety and a lower price earnings ratio, and that's all you need for retirement. You follow those businesses when they hit your buying price, you buy them and over the next 20, 30 years, you'll do much better than the S&P 500 which much, with much less risk. Further going back to Star Capital, you see that the returns, if you buy price to book value, high 3.4 are again around 4.5, Lower price to book values have much higher returns, have shown much higher returns in history. So smart investors would not just follow the herd into the S&P 500, but let's look for both. Also Eugene Fama, Nobel Prize winner, the father of the efficient market hip hypothesis found that size and value have a positive impact on long-term market returns. So it's even confirmed by the efficient market theory. Now, let me give you five stocks that you can watch and add it to your 2030 stocks, great businesses to watch and simply buy them where the book value or the price earnings ratio is low enough for you to reach your target with certainty. Let me give you a stock that I have analyzed here in a video. It's called Archer Daniels Midland. It's a food processing, global food processing company, and it has a price earnings ratio of 13.3, which means that the business yield is around seven, six, seven, seven point five percent And the price to book value is 1.29, which gives you a better margin of safety than 3.4. It's a boring business, typical value investment businesses. The dividend yield is also 3.2%. So I really believe that this business will give you a 7, 8% investment return over the long term compared to the 4.5% of the S&P 500. This business has been around for hundreds, hundred years, 89 years of increasing and paying dividends. So you are buying something pretty certain. And if you wish to hear more, check my ADM video analysis. And I'll also give you four other companies you might want to watch and put on your watch list. So Apple depends on the earnings. People will buy Apple phones. Earnings will be higher, lower, but it is relatively certain. And that's why also Buffett is buying. ADM, as I said, Berkshire is a great company, well-managed, great assets that you can be certain of doing well if you buy it at the right price. Another example, Consolidated Edison, just to put a C here, the Walt Disney Company on a D. 
and if you follow the, their stock prices, those are always volatile. But if you look at their price earnings ratio, long term growth, price to book value, value or tangible, intangible, de depending how you measure it, you can buy them at the right time and build a great portfolio over the long term. If you have a list of 20, 30 stocks like this and you simply watch, OK, I'm going to invest on a monthly basis. Oh, Disney's cheap like it was cheaper in December. I'm going to put it into Disney this month. Something else is cheap. I'm going to buy that, that, that. And then over the next 10 years, you have a portfolio over with a margin of safety and with higher yields than the S&P 500. And that's crucially important if you want to retire because it lowers your risk increases your returns and let me show you the difference. This is the difference. I also firmly believe that a portfolio of companies like ADM will outperform the S&P 500 in the long term due to their underlying business earnings and margin of safety. The differences are staggering. $1,000 compounded at 4.5% annually S&P 500 compounding would lead to an amount of 2,400 in 20 years while 1,007.5 leads to 4,200. So we have companies with less risk and offer higher yield. That's a huge difference when it comes to retiring, almost double the difference when it comes to retiring and financial independence. I wouldn't risk it on the S&P 500 when I can find something low risk and higher return. Price earnings ratio, you see even Apple 2015, the price earnings was 11, uh, 14. So now it is a little bit higher with 17, but still, let's say on the higher end of the average, but still always below the S&P 500 index. And you can see how you can buy such companies even at earnings yields of eight, nine percent. Later, the stock price appreciates and gets to the average. But this is what I'm talking about. If you have a patient financially independent mindset, then you know you can find those stocks and buy them on the cheap. If you wish to hear more about this mindset, please subscribe as I'll continue with the financial independence series. If you wish to hear more about such investments all around the world, betting on Asia and the 4.5 billion people that live there, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.